In accordance with the open public's meeting, adequate notification of this meeting has been provided by advertising in the record and posting notice in the Board of Education Administration building and filing notice with the city clerk. I hereby call to order the regular meeting Monday, October 17th, 2022 in the high school auditorium at 6.16 p.m. Can you see what you do a roll call, please? Yes. Mr. Bendezu is absent. Uh, Mr. Carroll? Present. Mr. Coleman? Present. Mr. Goodman? Present. Ms. Morey? Present. Mr. Oates? Present. Mr. Powell? Absent. Mr. Rodriguez? Present. Ms. Somerville? Present. Mr. James Vickery. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, let's stand for the flag. So please. Be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education determines it necessary to meet in executive session on Monday, October 17, 2022, to discuss legal, personnel, student-related matters, HIV reports, negotiations, and other confidential matters, and be it further resolved that these matters will be made public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Can I have a motion to go into executive session, please? I'll motion. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. A second? A second. Thank you, Mr. Oates. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And there's none. Thank you. It is 618. Thank you.
All right, good. Um, All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's joint meeting. Uh, Ms. Singh, if you'll do our roll call. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bendezu is absent. Mr. Carroll? Present. Mr. Coleman? Present. Mr. Goodman? Present. Ms. Morey? Present. Mr. Oates? Present. Mr. Powell? Present. Mr. Rodriguez? Present. Ms. Somerville? Present. Mr. James Vickery? Present. We have a quorum. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to our annual joint board meeting. Um, before we begin with the meeting, um, I'd like to inform you all that it had been reported in certain media outlets today that three teenagers were stabbed at an incident at Hackensack High School. Um, the authorities initially believed that it occurred at our school. That information was erroneously reported and has since been corrected by the media. Um, the three teenagers are not Hackensack High School students. So of course, I do understand the level of concern this incident, um, but I wanted to make sure I provided you with correct information. I apologize for such somber news. Um, that being said, uh, let's move on to more pleasant things. Um, tonight, we get together with our neighbors from our sending districts to highlight some of the special programs and offerings at Hackensack High School. Before I introduce Principal Montesano and his team to you, please join me in welcoming our guests from our sending districts. Please welcome the superintendent of Real Show Park, Dr. Sue Denobly. The superintendent of Maywood, Mike Jordan. <laughs> Board president of Maywood, Kevin Taylor. <laughs> and trustee, Claire Padavan. And, and also, while not in attendance tonight due to his own board meeting, I would like to publicly acknowledge the superintendent from South Hackensack, Jason Chiricella. We thank them for all taking their time from their busy schedules to join us tonight. Um, without further ado, let me introduce to you Principal Montesano. Again, my name is Jim Montesano. I am the high school principal. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. This really is usually one of my more exciting events because again, there's so many positive things that happen at Hackensack High School. So it's always nice to be able to kind of highlight some of the different comings and goings that are going on. Um, this year, we decided to highlight uh, Hispanic Heritage Month and all the different celebrations that have occurred at the high school, the different events. Uh, you're gonna hear from our best asset, which is our students in a few minutes. But before I do so, I'd just like to introduce a couple members of um, our administrative team. Uh, Ms. Nicole Adams, who is our grade 11 assistant principal. Bob Greenwood, our grade 10 assistant principal. Mr. King, who dressed a lot like me today, our grade 9 assistant principal. And Ms. Patty Lozano, our grade 12 assistant principal. Additionally, we are very fortunate to have a bunch of academic supervisors who help support our curricular offerings. And again, Hispanic Heritage Month was a key component to some of our, you'll see it in multidisciplinary areas, but uh, Janice Acebo, Social Studies and Physical Education. 
Roseanne Cavallo couldn't be here tonight, but she is our ELA supervisor. Uh, Rich Del Vecchio, Science and Industrial Arts. Amanda Grossi, uh, Math and Business. Tali Nosepian, Guidance. Marielle Messina, World Languages and ESL. Gordon Whiting is our Athletic Director. And Joanne Winters is Special Education. One other highlight that I'd like to share and just a thank you. Uh, we have the food in the main hallway was prepared through our RISE program, which is something new that we're starting this year. RISE stands for Reaching Independence Through Support and Education. A uh, special thank you to the students and the members of Mrs. Ballack, Mrs. Carroll, Mr. McCoy, Ms. Kaplan, and Mrs. Coffey's classes. Take a bow. Take These students are partnering with our um, culinary program and they're really helping to you know, sort of kind of support some of the livelihoods around the school. So thank you boys and girls for everything you do. <laughs> Additionally, um, special thanks to our own Board of Education for just some of the facility upgrades that we've had at the high school. I think I, you know, a lot of different people are commenting, but uh, we are very fortunate. I mean, our main entrance is a sight to be seen. It really is, especially in the evening. Uh, it's beautiful. It really is a showpiece for our school, and we're very excited about it. Um, additionally, up top is just our main gym, but I just put that picture up there because it really energizes me. I mean, again, we've been struck, stricken with the pandemic the last few years, and we really haven't been able to do some of the different events that make Hackensack High School so special. This is just an example. You know, you can put 2,000 students into a main gym, uh, and they can celebrate each other. We can recognize the different, you know, fall sports and athletes and different clubs and activities that are taking place. And we're excited to do that again this year. Uh, and again, it really is one of the highlights of being a high school principal. Additionally, uh, some of the other things, if you get an opportunity to go to one of our football games or soccer games at night, we completely redid um, the main bleachers. They are beautiful. They went sandblasted down to bare metal minimum that were there. Um, probably a better job since I was a custodian summer helper when I painted these things. I don't think they look quite as good, but it's pretty close. I think the way we painted, we just poured paint down the stairs and just let it dribble. Uh, this was a little bit better operation that they chose, uh, but it really is beautiful. And again, the kids, most importantly, the kids feel a true sense of pride. The kids feel a true sense of ownership when they see these things. The outer building as well, uh, we were able to just redo our East Wing gym, which looks again, fantastic it really does and some of our future plans that we have are this actual very auditorium we have a plan to kind of redo the auditorium we have a, re a plan to redo the cafeteria our fitness center and our field house so again it's an exciting time to be a comet and again i think you know we have all the bells and whistles and beautiful things to kind of keep our kids home we're very very excited about it so thank you to our own board of education for their support um, Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our stars. So here's our students and some of our things. They're just going to kind of talk about some of the different events that have happened during the month of Hispanic Heritage Month. Good evening, esteemed members of the Board of Education, staff, and everyone present. I'm Isabella Vargas, the president of the Spanish National Honor Society. The HHS Media Center honored Hispanic Heritage Month by displaying books throughout the library by Hispanic authors. This allowed many of our many of our students to see that Hispanic Heritage Month commemorates the history, culture, and contributions of Hispanic Americans. Coming up is Samantha Quinto and Mario Chong. Uh, hello, hola, me llamo Samantha Quito y estoy en el uh, per séptimo periodo de Stephanie Moreno y de señora Stephanie, Stephanie Moreno y estoy en la clase de ella de... Pues, 
Uh, hello, my name is Samantha Quito, and I am in Miss Moreno's seventh period class. Um, we went after school a few weeks ago, I think. Uh, we were playing after school some different kind of cards. Um, there was dominoes. Um, there were other kinds of card games, and I played naipes, which is a traditional Spanish card game. And um, we also did other activities, and we went there for an hour, and I went with some of my friends. And we mostly liked naipes, and we also ate Argentine empanadas. Thank you. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Mario Renato Pichón. Estoy en el segundo periodo, no, fourth period, el cuarto periodo de Miss Moreno. Y la señora Miss Moreno nos dio la oportunidad de, de jugar, de participar en juegos del mundo hispano, como el, como los naipes, el, dom, el, el dominó, pasta y la lotería. Para mí, para todos, fue una experiencia muy buena, pero para mí especialmente fue muy buena, ya que pude ex, eh, experimentar uno de los juegos que yo jugaba mucho en mi país, eh, República Dominicana, que era el dominó. Y, me, me gustó tanto que puedes jugarlo con varios estudiantes y también profesores. Gracias. Good evening, I'm Hennessy Speranza. Josh Cordova. Um, we are members of LASA, the school's Latin American Student Association. And as a part of the Hispanic Heritage Month celebration at the high school, we sponsored a movie night uh, in which we provided with the marketing team. The movie we showed was In the Heights, which refers to the common themes in the Hispanic community, such as family, love, immigration, and higher education. Over 90 students and African parents attended the event here, so we should um, We would like to thank everyone who made this event possible, including the HEA Pride and Pass Grant, who provided the food. Hello, my name is Emily Lima. I'm the secretary of the Spanish Honor Society. The drop-in center hosted a Hispanic karaoke party on October 7th. Students and staff enjoyed singing, listening to their favorite songs in Spanish, celebrating the cultural mix of music, honoring many Hispanic artists. Good evening, everyone. My name is David Gallo. I am the vice president of the Spanish National Honor Society. The Spanish National Honor Society and the Latin American Student Association, along with other Hexac High School members, held a Hispanic Heritage Month celebration on October 13th. It highlighted our talented students demonstrating their performance through song, dance, and poems. Throughout these performances, the students had the chance to demonstrate their pride in Hispanic culture and share their respective culture with all who attended. Luz Hernandez brought us to Mexico through singing Cielo Rojo. Jean Pachella recited his poem, El Futuro del Julio Cotazar, that he learned in his Honor Spanish 3 class. Johaira and Karina did an Ecuadorian danza callejón. Arlene Acevedo rocked the crowd with her Viva Mexico and Me Gustas Mucho. The HHS chorus soothes the crowd with Nic the Nicaraguan lullaby, Niño Precioso. And Senora Gonzalez brought together a dance mix with cumbia, merengue, and limbo. Helen, Aiden, and Ruby read a poem from the AP Spanish language class. Michelle Gavis brought us to Colombia by singing Yo Me Amo Cumbia. Senora Colasino, Spanish G class, excited the crowd by demonstrating the Dominican pride with the bachata mix. 
We close our performances with Asia Poundexter from Spanish Honors 3 class, singing a Borero song. At the end, all the participants gathered for a group picture to commemorate the celebration. This is the link to the performances that is posted on the Hackensack High School website. On Friday, October 14th, the Hackensack High School committee was invited to wear their country's t-shirt. Uh, the Parent Outreach Office handed out various books written by Hispanic authors based on Hispanic stories and characters from October 6th to October 25th. Books were given to parents, students, and the Hackensack High School community to inspire reading and parental engagement. And now next up are the CAT students. My name is Alpha Churzo. I'm from Maywood. I'm currently a senior here at HHS, and I plan to pursue architecture after I graduate this year. Uh, first, I'm going to discuss the demographics here um, in our CAD class. We have 11 kids in our class, which is not very many, but almost half of those students are part of the Latino and Hispanic culture. Four of us plan to pursue architecture and design, and the other seven plan to pursue engineering. We also are eligible for credits at the Berkeley Community College to break our college applications. Um, we chose to include the representation of Hispanic and Latinos in um, our community. So here is the High Line in New York City, which was open to the public in 2014. And here is Isabella Castilla. She is a Puerto Rican American landscape architect. She was the lead designer and project manager of the High Line. And today it um, has many gardens and sculptures and attractions for people to enjoy. Hi, my name is Kimberly Hernandez. I'm from Hackensack and I'm a student here at Hackensack High School. And I am Dominican and Colombian and I plan to um, pursue architecture in the future. So up here we have a few Hispanic and Latino architects and engineers. One is which is Nora Rincon. Narincon is a Mexican-American automotive engineer. She was encouraged by her family to become a mother and wife, but instead discovered new opportunities in pursuing engineering after speaking to a school counselor. This proves that there's opportunities for everyone, no matter what your background is, and is encouraging for me as a Hispanic as well, and female. Another person is Cesar Pe Peggy. He is an um, Argentinian-American architect who unfortunately passed away recently at the age of 92. However, leaves a legacy um, for building one of his most known creations, which was the World Financial Center Complex in New York. The image here shows the Brookfield Place, which has stunning glass enclosed in the Winter Garden. He also contributed to projects such as the TWA terminal at the JFK airport. We also wanted to thank the Board of Ed for um, having a CAD class at this school. It's really amazing and um, it's inspired us with our futures to pursue architecture. And we also wanted to thank Ms. Louise for inspiring us to pursue architecture in the future. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We will continue our Hispanic Heritage Month celebration until October 27th with a living wax museum at the Media Center. Come see the HHS staff dress up as Hispanic characters. We would like to say thank you to Senora Colasino, Senora Gonzalez, Senora Hernandez, Senora Gurion, Mrs. Prate, Ms. Kennedy, Mrs. Barmudez, Ms. Veo, Mr. Porto, and the Drop-In Center for assisting us with our performances. And now we would like to introduce the HHS Chorus singing the lullaby, Nino Precioso. Thank you all. I would just like to really recognize and thank the members of our Spanish Honor Society Committee who really uh, in our Spanish Heritage Month, I should say, committee, who really did make this school come alive. I think it really culminated on Friday. Uh, it really was a special event. This place was standing room only. Uh, and I think the most special part was they really encouraged each other. They really cheered each other on, which really just is a testament to our children here at Hackensack High School 
uh, it was such a positive event. It really did kind of bring us back to, you know, we're reinstating, I guess, the, you know, positive culture that we've had and we've kind of lost the past couple of years due to the pandemic. So it was our first, you know, big assembly that we've had in probably two plus years. Uh, and it really was a wonderful event. So I just want to say thank you. Now you're in for a treat in closing. So I'm going to turn it over to our horse. students that participated in that. Thank you, uh, high school principals and staff that uh, helped support all our students to make sure that all came together. And then we will take a short break and uh, return in about how many minutes? About five minutes.
All right, let's, let's jump back into it. We will start with this parchment. Actually, we're going to start with our student report so that he can go home and do all of the homework that I'm sure he has to do and then get in bed. So we will start with our student report and then we'll go back, Ms. Parchman. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I hope you guys have done well since we last spoke. Uh, thankfully, I'm back to give another report on how we've been doing. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first, our marching band participated in the Midland Park competition this past Sunday and finished third in our division. We lost second place by one point, but we'll take it. Uh, even more impressive was the fact that we placed fifth overall out of a field of 11 other bands. So that's great. Next, on October 12th, the high school administered the PSAT to our 10th and 11th grade uh, students. This enables our students to become exposed to the SAT standardized test for college admissions and students are able to earn scholarships and awards for high performance here. Uh, lastly, Friday, October 14th, the contemporary study students, they visited Barnes and Nobles on Route 17 in Paramus. Uh, in their classes, these students are researching subjects in contemporary nonfiction titles that are of particular interest to them prior to the field trip, and then spent some time choosing and reading the excerpts before making their final selection. So the books will be the basis of their coffee hour projects. And this year's topics of, self in of interest include self-improvement, true crime, and social issues. So I'll now go over what we have upcoming for the next two or three weeks or so. Uh, I'm especially excited for Wednesday, October 26th, as our high school guidance department is presenting our annual college and career night. Um, the event will begin at 7 p.m. in the main gym, and there will be over 90 colleges, universities, trade technical schools, and military recruiters in attendance. So that's great. I'm, I'm very excited for that. Um, on November 3rd, the high school will be hosting an open house for all eighth graders. Uh, students from Rochelle Park, South Hackensack, and Hackensack will be invited to attend our open house that will highlight our academics, clubs, activities, and athletic programs, which I'm a, you know, I'm a big fan of. Um, this information will be sent to our eighth graders next week. And that's all for now. And I look forward to seeing you guys all next time with another report that tells you guys how us comments are seeding. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. So we'll move to Ms. Uh, Oates Parchment, please. everyone hear me clearly? Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, and before I start, I just want to um, acknowledge the students who participated tonight at the high school and also to our student report uh, for the report given this evening. So today I am going to present to you the presentation for our student performance data. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to present the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment, student performance data for language arts, math, and science. These assessments measure how well students meet the New Jersey student learning standards. Uh, the standards define what students are expected to learn in each content area. The standards are the foundation upon which all New Jersey districts, including Hackensack, build curriculum, 
and plan instruction to prepare each New Jersey student with knowledge and skills needed for success. And it's important to know that the following provides a complete picture of student achievement. It's just not this NJSLA, but it's also students' daily interactions with their teachers, district level developed assessments, and teacher developed assessments. So the report consists of three sections, as you can see, a district analysis, school analysis, and a demographic analysis. The district analysis, section one of this report provides an analysis of the district as it relates to student performance results in English, language arts, which I will will refer to as ELA, math, and science. If you look at the last row of this table, you can see district-wide how students in grades three through nine performed in English language arts compared to students in New Jersey. So I will just highlight the last row where you see all grades. We had 200. I'm sorry, 2,495 students participate. And I'll just show you the pattern, then I won't have to do this pattern again because we would be here for a long, long time. So if you look, um, we have all grades, 18% not meeting expectations compared to the state, 14%. We always want to see the number lower than the state. Uh, for not exceeding. 22% partially meeting, opposed to the state with 15% partially meeting. And again, we want that number lower than the state. 28% approaching and 23% the state approaching. Meeting expectations, we have 26% of our students meeting expectations in ELA compared to the state, 36%. And we always want to see this number, uh, the 26% higher, or at least at the state level. And 6% exceeding for our district compared to the state, 13%. This is just a graph, sorry, that's just a graph of what I just explained to you. This table shows how our students in grades three through eight performed on the math assessment. It also shows how all students in middle school and high school combined performed on the algebra one assessment and geometry assessment. And finally, it shows how high school students performed on the Algebra 2 assessment. And I'll just, again, highlight all grades for math. And I'll just go right to meeting expectations. So 17% of our students met expectations compared to the state 31%, 1% exceeded expectations compared to the state. And this is just a bar graph of the same thing I presented to you. This table shows the results for the science assessment. This assessment is only given to students in grades five, eight, and 11. And as you can see, all grades, 1,109 students. Uh, the, the science achievement levels are slightly different, four levels. And you can see level one, 
the percentage of students that did not, that met a level one, the percentage of students that were at limited. And the last two columns demonstrate uh, the level students who were proficient or advanced. This section will provide student performance for each school. I would like you to keep in mind though, uh, that although students begin testing in grade three, preparing our students to meet the NJSLA begins the moment they enter our schools, which is preschool and kindergarten. So all teachers are a part of building this foundation of learning. Also, this data gives you a broad, broad stroke. Uh, we, as administrators and teachers and supervisors and directors, we further unpack this data because there's so many different things we look at. For example, looking at how long a student was in our district or the specific uh, areas where students did well. So that's just an example or how long the teacher was in the class. So we look at a lot of different things. So keep in mind, this is a broad stroke. So this slide shows all the third graders who took the ELA test in each school. I'm just going to highlight the district row we had 351 third graders who took the ELA. And once again, it's the same pattern. So 75 students did not meet expectations, 61 partially meeting, 102 approaching, 99 meeting expectations, and 14 exceeding, and you see the percentages there. Fourth grade, we have about 40% who met or exceeded the expectations. I'm just going to focus on the last two rows or columns. Grade five, 19% meeting or exceeding. And I'm just adding the two, 17% uh, and 2%. That's how I'm getting the 19%. Grade six, 23% meeting or exceeding. Grade seven, doing my mental math, 36% meeting or exceeding. Grade eight, 38% meeting or exceeding. And grade nine, 35% meeting or exceeding. Now I will share the same thing with you from there. So I'm just going to focus on the meeting expectations. Grade three, 32% met or exceeded. Grade four, 29% met or exceeded. And you'll see this report online so you can look at the different school levels, uh, what students did at the various schools. Grade five, 12% meeting or exceeding. Grade six, 10% meeting. 
18 or exceeding. Grade seven, 15 percent. Grade eight, nine percent. And we also had 61 students at the middle school who took the Algebra One test assessment and 64% met or exceeded. For the high school, we had for Algebra One, 9% meeting or exceeding. We had 21 students take the geometry test in middle school. 52% met expectations. Students who assessed in geometry at the high school, 18% met expectations. Algebra two, these are students at the high school, 67% met expectations, 12 were tested. Science, proficient or advanced, we had 11% in grade five. Three percent proficient in grade eight. Twenty percent profic proficient or advanced in grade eleven. And you will note that there's a trend throughout the state for science in terms of scores. The following table will compare each elementary. Excuse me. The following. The following table will compare each elementary school's student performance in ELA and math compared to the other three elementary schools in the district. So I'll just walk you through this first one. So this first slide, and then we'll follow the pattern after this. Uh, all grades in English language arts, all our third and fourth graders, we had 22% in Fairmount not meeting compared to the rest of the schools in our districts, the other three elementary schools. We had 21% partially meeting compared to the other elementary schools in the district, 29% compared to 27% the rest of the district, 24% meeting expectations compared to 33% for the rest of the district, and 4% exceeding compared to 7% in the district. In mathematics, we had 32% meeting or exceeding, oh, I'm sorry, 25% uh, met expectations compared to 29% of the district in the district. And you can see exceeding expectations, the rest of the district at 3%. Jackson Avenue School. 27% met expectations compared to 31% the rest of the district. 3% exceeded expectations compared to 7% the rest of the district.
in math, 21% met expectations compared to 30%. 3% exceeded expectations compared to 2%. Fannie Meyer Hillers, 33% met expectations compared to 29% for the rest of the district. 9% exceeded compared to 5% in the English language arts. Math, 34% met expectations compared to 26% of the rest of the district. 3% exceeded compared to 2%. Nellie K. Parker, 38% met expectations compared to 28%. 8% exceeded expectations compared to 5% English language arts. Math, 32% met expectations compared to 27% in the district. 3% exceeded expectations compared to 2%. This section, section three, will provide the student performance data by demographics. I'm not going to review all of this. We're going to look at all grades. But if you see in the first column, it shows um, elementary school, three, four, middle school, five, eight, high school, grade nine, what I'm going to give you is a synopsis of all grades. And I'll take you through, this is by the subgroup of race. We had 101 Asian take the test, tested. 567 Black tested. 1,637 Hispanic tested. 10 multiple race. 11 other and 129 white. For a total of 2,495 students tested. And I'm just going to go over to meeting expectations. And this is for English language arts by race. 69% of Asians met or exceeded. 32% of blacks met or exceeded. 28% of Hispanic met or exceeded. 40% multiple races met or exceeded. 36% of other met or exceeded. White, 52% met or exceeded. And when you put out all of the students together, 32% met or exceeded. This is just a bar graph showing you what I just shared with you. For math, the same thing. You can see the number of students tested by race. And if we go to the last two columns, 50% Asian met or exceeded, 17% Black met or exceeded, 15% Hispanic met or exceeded, 30% multiple races met or exceeded, 25% other met or exceeded, 28% white met or exceeded uh, total students, all students, the average 18% met or exceeded. And this is the same thing, or graph. In science, you can see, by race, the results are uh, Asian, 38% met or exceeded, Black, 7% met or exceeded, Hispanic, 9% met or exceeded, multiple races, 7% met or exceeded, White, 30% met or exceeded for all students, 12%. Now we will, uh, I will show you by gender. Uh, you can see male and female and the number of students tested. 
So for English language arts, all grades, 40% uh, of females met or exceeded, males 25% met or exceeded. For math, 19% of females met or exceeded, 18% of males met or exceeded. For science, female 11% met or exceeded, male 13% met or exceeded. Okay, now we're going by program um, and programs are considered, if you look in the left column, all the way at the bottom, free and reduced lunch, we had 1,177 students. S students with 504s, 80. English language learners, 323. Special ed, 500. General ed, 1,725. We go to the far right for free and reduced students on free and reduced lunch, 29% met or exceeded. Section uh, for 504 students, 44% met or exceeded. English language learners, 10% met or exceeded. Special ed, 5% met or exceeded. General ed, 43% met or exceeded uh, for total students. 32% met or exceeded. I skip something there. Math, 17% free and reduced lunch, met or exceeded, 20%. Met or exceeded, those with 504s, English language learners, 10% met or exceeded, special ed, 3% met or exceeded, general ed, 24% met or exceeded, all students, 18% met or exceeded. And science, 8% free and reduced lunch students, 504 students, 20% met or exceeded. 8% of free and reduced lunch students met or exceeded. 20% with 504s met or exceeded. English language learners, 1%. Special ed, 3%. General education, 16%, and all students, 12%. So that is it for the NJSLA, and I'll move on now to access for ELL summary. So while that is being pulled up, I'll just tell you access for L's. The next uh, report you are going to see, um, students who take this, all students who qualify for bilingual services must take access, even if they are not in a bilingual class. All students identified as English language learners are required to take access 
it measures the English language proficiency growth. And the purpose of this is just to monitor student progress and English language proficiency every year. And it also determines, and this is not just the only criteria of whether learners have atta attained an English language proficiency level that will allow them to meaningfully participate in English language classrooms. Students are assessed in speaking, writing, listening, and reading. And this report has three sections, same as before. Section one, district analysis. And I'm going to just ask you to look uh, at the bottom. We have 790 students who took the access. And we have 216 students who are at a level one entering, 193 students beginning, 242 developing. And this is language acquisition. We're not comparing students to students who took the NJSLA. This is just showing how our students are acquiring the language. And as I said, this is a broad stroke because there's so much that uh, determines why the results are the way they are. Let me finish, okay. And we have 17 students, which are 10% bridging and a little, a little less than 10 reaching level six. And now I will share the school analysis. And this just shows um, the number of students in grades K. I'll just give you an example and then we'll just go through this, who uh, took access. And we have four elementary schools. Um, our bilingual programs are in Jackson Avenue and Nellie K. Parker School. But as I said before, all students who have been uh, determined to be English language learners uh, must take the test. And so you see the number of students entering, 41, beginning, 14, developing, less than 10, expanding less than 10, bridging less than 10, and reaching, we, we don't have any okay. reaching zero. And if you just look across, it's the same pattern for grade one. In grade two, grade three, grade four. Grade five, grade six, seven, eight. Grade nine, grade 
by 10. Grade 11. And grade 12. And once again, uh, it's a broad stroke and we will be um, digging deeply into this data. Once again, you saw this uh, slide before on the NJSLA. This is just showing in each school how students are acquiring the English acts, English language learning. Miller School. Jackson Avenue. Nellie K. Parker. And the next section is demographic analysis, section three. And if you look uh, in the column to the left, we have 24 Asian, 15 Black, 722 Hispanic. Um, we don't report when it's less than 10, and we have 20 White. And you can see the results of those bridging and reaching. If you look in the last two columns, 17% Asian, 0% Black, 2% Hispanic, and 2% all students. By gender, see across from entering to beginning, the female and the male. By program, we're only looking at uh, free and reduced lunch and special ed. And that ends uh, the report for access. So we, um, we've seen the data, and now I'm going to share with you, we see the areas where uh, we have work to do. As always, we always have work to do. We want to see students grow. So I just want to share with you uh, some of the things. I'm not going to share everything, just some of the ways that our team teachers collectively, all of us um, in this work are going to address some of the data that we saw in terms of students who are not proficient in the area. So for English language arts, we have a tier one, tier two, and tier three for grades five through 12. I'm not going to go into detail. You can look online, but these are some of the things um, that are being done to address the data. More things in ELA that are being done to address 
students who are not proficient in ELA. And Maya, you saw um, that there are challenges with the mayor, but we have, uh, we are addressing it with tier two and tier three interventions. And uh, tier three interventions at the middle school and high school are gonna provide students with additional period of math instruction daily. So that's one of the ways that we are going to address mathematics intervention, benchmark assessments that are going to mirror what students would see on the NJSLA test so they can be better equipped. Um, analysis of benchmark data by teachers and PLCs, professional learning communities. And we see more of that when our teachers have time to meet and analyze data to improve instruction and support for the grade four to five mathematics transition. Uh, we have district coaches, two math district coaches, and they're going to uh, provide support. For grades K through four, math intervention, I just, uh, intervention, I just want to highlight the second bullet district-wide development of a formative assessment bank comprised of high quality instructional tests. We had teachers in the summer uh, create formative assessments and these assessments are used so we don't wait until the end of our, our period, but we can continue to track students' progress day by day. I will just highlight the first bullet for K through five, but I want to say something here because I, I think it really needs to be said. Now, elementary teachers prep for four many subjects, English language arts, math, social studies and science, meaning they prepare lessons, they prepare for them. If you look at our standards, they require our elementary teachers to be masters of all. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough job, and that's why um, we have coaches now, math coaches, um, to support, uh, to build teachers' conceptual understanding and knowledge of mathematics, to create thinking classrooms where students do mathematics and varied representations are used to represent student understanding of mathematics. Those mathematics experts, you know, can help. Uh, because it, it is challenging. And I just wanted to say that. Uh, response to uh, DLM, you notice I did not share the data on dynamic learning maps because um, for students' privacy, if it's less than 10, we don't present information. But you can see that the special ed department has looked at the data and they're going to be using N2Y platform, which differentiates instruction and content areas best on, based on the New Jersey Dynamic Learning Maps essential elements. You also saw the science, um, uh, the science uh, department um, and the supervisor along with the team at, at the high school, they have D-Track science classes at the high school for increased access to college and AP level instruction. And this is a best practice. We had a consultant come in and work um, with the supervisor and the teachers. Um, they now have benchmark assessments that mirror the NJSLA. And we have an adoption of something called Open Science Ed Curriculum Resources. Um, I know that we are going to see um, student growth in this area, in all areas. The same for access for ELL. As you can see, there are strategies that have been identified. I'll just highlight uh, the fourth bullet, vocabulary across content areas. You know, vocabulary acquisition is really important and targeted professional development in grades five through 12 is something new. 
Um, it's uh, called breaking the writing walls because writing was one area identified. So effective strategies to get English language learners to improve their writing, reading comprehension and vocabulary skills. So um, I, I just want to say that uh, we're moving forward. We've had a lot of obstacles you know, for the last two or three years, but we're moving forward and we're going to uh, get to where we need to be with our students. Two more. <laughs> These are gonna go quickly. <laughs> All right, so as uh, Mr. Sapero is getting the, the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Self-Assessment Data Report up, I'll tell you what this is. Uh, each school through its school safety slash school climate team is required to evaluate its implementation of the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act uh, from July 1st through June 30th by using a self-assessment. And the self-assessment tool includes eight core elements that address all of the ABR requirements, Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights, that's ABR, for the schools. Schools must achieve a rating. Um, no, they don't have to must achieve a rating. The maximum rating that a school may receive is 78. So this just shows you the first column, the high school, middle school, Fairmount Hillers, Jackson, Parker. And across, you can see the different programs that they self-assess themselves on. And this is a comprehensive assessment where they have to answer questions about um, where they believe they are in terms of programs and approaches and initiatives, training and board of ed approved HIV policy, other staff instruction and training, curriculum instruction on HIV and related information skills and HIV personnel, school level reporting procedures, investigations, HIV reporting, and then you see the total column. Um, there are pages and pages that each school has to assess themselves. So as you can see, um, the total points that each school earns for average of 91%, they really did a fantastic job. So we want to um, really thank all of our anti-bullying specialists, our district coordinator, Heather Coleman, and all of our staff to play a part in uh, making sure that we reduce um, the number of HIV cases that's ongoing and it's work. And my final report is to report to you the Hackensack High School Graduation Pathways Data Report. Um, it, it, this is a brief report, so Adrian, I'll just, um, what you say, Adrian? There it is. Yep. Just, just 
click on that. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Go to so we had the total number of students that graduated the class of 2022, 511. The number of students graduating under the graduated under the substitute competency test process, 444 for ELA, math 305. The number of students graduated under the portfolio appeals process, um, none. The number of students receiving state endorsed high school diplomas as a result of meeting any alternative requirements for graduation as specified in the IEP 62, ELA, math 65. This is um, the good news. The total number of students denied graduation zero. The total number of students denied graduation from 12th grade class solely because of failure to pass the ELA and mathematics assessment substitute competency test or portfolio appeals process based on provisions of this chapter zero. That ends our reports for this evening. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Moran. Good evening, give me one second here. All right, I'm Christopher Moran. I'm the principal of the Jackson Avenue School. I'm alongside uh, Mr. Josh Cohen. I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm, I'm Josh Cohen, chairperson of Hackensack Shade Tree Committee. Our numbers are pretty easy to follow here. All right, simple math for those of you uh, after we just got all gone through those numbers. So this started out um, with Mr. Cohen and his team. Uh, they were, I guess I'll let him explain it a little bit, but I'll give you the backside of how I got involved here. Um, Josh reached out to me and he told me that he had an opportunity to partner for a grant uh, that they were going to put in the park that is adjacent to Jackson Avenue School. So I, I invited him in to just have a discussion uh, to talk about the things that we had going on at Jackson. And I thought it would be a good opportunity for he and I to uh, see if we can partner together and uh, see what we can come up with. I'll let him add to that. Yeah, it's a, we got a $20,000 grant. Um, the, the theme of it is for environmental equity. So they wanted us to focus on a low to moderate income area um, and uh, underserved community. Uh, the, the only area matching that uh, in Hackensack is the Jackson Ave area and, and that section of the city. I actually thought we'd have more opportunity in other areas, but uh, because of the way the census blocks are divided up, it, it was only in the Jackson area area that, that met that. Uh, we, we originally were looking at Pulaski Park uh, as the area where we could uh, focus the attention. Um, you know, we wanted to do street tree plantings. We had a lot of other ideas. It's really hard to plant any trees in that area. Uh, you have very small sidewalk, uh, sidewalk space, you have a lot of overhead wires, a lot of paved areas, uh, a lot of uh, uh, rental units where the, the owners don't even want trees in front of their property. So we're looking at the map and we saw you have four acres, mostly uh, treeless property right in the middle of, of the whole location. Uh, Chris has been a, a great partner, uh, really opened doors at everything we could to get this grant. Um, to sum it up, we were, we were able to plant uh, 52 trees on the four acres spanning Pulaski and uh, uh, the, the school. Uh, we, we had an event, we got 250 one gallon uh, containers planted. And we also had our Arbor Day tree there. That's what, that's what you're looking at there. We did an Arbor, Arbor Day planting to get a, a tree in front of the school. Yeah, so it's what's really great about it, um, for those of you who've been to Jackson Avenue, the, the field itself, we call it the Great Lawn, there was, there's one physical tree on the lawn. Um, and on the front of the school where our flagpole is, um, it was completely just 
overgrown weeds. We tore out bushes. And I have to give a special shout out to the DPW. Um, they came by, and literally spent about two whole days between the park and Jackson Avenue. And they dug up, we put 26 trees on Jackson Avenue's property, 26 in the park. We also um, gutted the bed in front of the, uh, in front of the flagpole, in front of the entranceway. So when you do come to Jackson Avenue now, you'll be greeted by this gorgeous uh, garden, as you're seeing in this picture right here. So the original tree uh, was planted for Arbor Day. And if you look around, we had so many volunteers from the community. I know um, President James Vickery was there, Trustee Carroll was there, uh, was there, Superintendent Sanchez was out there. Many of our families came out, and um, I'll let Mr. Cohen speak to his perspective. There was retired teachers there. There was uh, Mr. Del Vecchio from, you know, running our science department. He came out. It was just amazing to see the amount of support that was, that was out there on this, uh, th this Saturday morning over at Jackson. Yeah, it, it was really great. I, I, I didn't know exactly what to expect, and uh, the Jackson App community turned out. It, it was really fun. The kids had a blast. Uh, and and our, our project is, is transformational. We, you know, you can see all, all the trees along the front there. Um, the city was really great. They heard about the project. They hooked us up with a landscape architect who gave us a really nice list of trees. So everything that we planted was native. We have a big diversity of trees. We did uh, elms, birch, maples, oaks, uh, red buds, uh, American lindens. We have black gums. So big variety. We didn't just do like one, one kind of tree. Um, and I, I think the biggest compliment uh, when, when Mr. Moran uh, told me, he said he had a delivery person come in and said that the, uh, the, the entrance to the school is very welcoming now. And uh, I, I couldn't think of a bigger, bigger compliment to me for, for the project. So also I got to give a shout out uh, to Coach Jenny and the high school cheer team. They also came out on the Saturday. This is them right there. And they had a blast. I mean, I guess cheerleaders can find fun in anything. And you look at the ones down there, they're actually smiling. They had a ball. And, and then, again, the DPW came back. So we also, within the grant, we have seven-gallon bags attached to all these trees. And they filled them up twice uh, to saturate, the, you know, and they, they, the bags emptied within a short time. Thankfully, the last few days, we've had some uh, more rain. But due to the... Uh, the water table at Jackson Avenue, we're able to maintain, and these, these trees are gonna flourish. And I want uh, Mr. Cohen just to take a second to acknowledge the sponsors, because when you come by this school, and I say when, because I know you all will come by, that's for sure, um, just take note, like now our students walk up the path, which was just sidewalk, we're a brick and mortar community. And now when you walk along the side of the, the going down the sidewalk, once these trees flourish and blossom, it's going to be just absolutely gorgeous. And Mr. Cohen mentioned that on the perimeter, on the Washington side, we have all trees along the back fence line. So the goal is at some point when they mature a little bit, our students will be reading under trees outside. And we have a digital, um, an outdoor classroom. If you've been there, you see we've had tree stumps. We have another 20 plus tree stumps. So now we have additional outside areas for the children to read. So we're very excited about the, obviously we're, we're fortunate enough with the space that we have, but now it's about utilizing it. And I can't thank Mr. Cohen and his team. And when you, when you hear about the amount of people that, you know, really got involved with this, it was amazing. So um, I can't thank him enough for, you know, spending the time with my team at, at Jackson Avenue and uh, myself, I, when Dr. Soto was there, she was involved. Mr. Morell's there, Officer Steve, Superintendent Sanchez. I mean, you know, we got everybody involved, our students, our staff, it was just an amazing day. So, and then to the board, thank you all. And I remember Ms. Mowry, Trustee Mowry read it. She was sitting over this side when you said, oh, Jackson Avenue received the $20,000 grant. <laughs> and when you come to life, I want to thank all of you for, for the support because it is, I get to see it every day and it's, it's amazing. So thank you all. Yeah, w one thing that was really heartening to me also, uh, when people hear about the project, they just wanted to get in. So, so they gave us more, more and more. Uh, Downs Tree Service gave us, I think, 30 yards of mulch. They, they dropped it off, uh, a full container of it. They just dropped it off for free. Uh, Vic Victoria's Nursery gave us all the trees for $150 each. Um, the cherries we planted retailed for six or 700 on the sticker. So 
I mean, that's how we were able to get so many. Uh, I, I, when I priced out the, the plan, the landscape architect originally gave us, it was like $40,000 just, just for the trees. And uh, so we weren't planning on planning all that and, and they, they gave us just a great deal on it. Um, I have my uh, Shade Tree members to thank also, uh, Dana Burns and, and uh, Trip Avalone, uh, Margot Cooper, and uh, just wanna make sure I don't forget anything. Oh, uh, we also have uh, uh, my grant partners, um, the Hackensack Gardening Club. They were instrumental in, in putting together the event and re really helped make it fun for the kids, uh, helped design the, the pollinator garden. Uh, we're also partnering with uh, Vicki Cohen from Fairleigh Dickinson and uh, um, Mrs. Flynn, who is an educator in town, and they're gonna help us with a curriculum for the teachers. We're going to be buying books uh, for the teachers for their curriculum, and we'll put together an outdoor classroom with some tools so that the kids can take advantage of the green space that's outside. We'll get them like shovels or, you know, uh, magnifying glasses, whatever, whatever they need to, to have an education, uh, you know, takes advantage of the green space. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. And the last thing, I like to use a little humor. So we're doing all this on the Saturday, and Superintendent Sanchez is, on, you know, is getting ready to head out. He says, you know, uh, you know what would be really nice? Some pumpkins, some mums, you know, just to add a little bit more to it. I said, oh, okay, you know, you know, we just got this going on. He's like, no, no, you know, just don't have to do it. I'm like, oh, okay, you know. But if you come by, I really just take notice of it. It's awesome. And uh, again, thank you so much. Thank you all for your time. And uh, stop by Jackson at any time. Have a great night. I have three open seats if anyone's interested in helping with, with other projects also. Thank you. All right, thank you. I will move to our superintendent's report. Thank you. Before I give my report, I would like to thank Assistant Superintendent Andrea Parchment, Principal Chris Moran, Josh Cohen, and of course, Ash, our student board member, for their respective presentations and reports. So this school year continues to roll along. We just finished the Start Strong ben Benchmark Assessments and we are ready to get right back into the business of learning. Throughout the next couple of weeks, district administrators will be out conducting instructional rounds to better understand teaching and learning in our schools. During instructional rounds, a group of educators make a series of visits to multiple classrooms to observe the interactions between students and teachers to create a data picture of what has been seen in teaching and learning practices throughout the school. It is these data and practices that are shared with the school, not information about individual teachers and students. The aim of the instructional rounds is to observe teaching and learning, to discern root, pro root causes for problems of practice identified by the school, and to help the school and district create more productive outcomes. Just last week, we had our first instructional round of the year, and it was great to collaborate with my fellow administrators and dialogue about our observations of teacher practice. I'm proud to say that I was able to see a lot of great lessons and instructional practices. Our young scholars are so very lucky to have such amazing teachers. Moving on, progress continues to be made on our numerous construction projects. Solar panels continue to be installed throughout the district, the installation of new boilers at Fairmont School are complete. New unit ventilators are up and running at Hackensack Middle School with improved um, efficient heating and improved airflow. And the elevator at Jackson Avenue School is just a few weeks away from completion. In the months ahead, we will continue to, we, excuse me, we will be going out to bid on, on Hackensack High School's field house, fitness center, and auditorium renovations. And we expect the elevator at Fairmont School to be, to, to, to be, excuse me, to be completed in the spring. It is truly an exciting time to be at Hackensack Public School. Also on tonight's agenda, the board will be approving resolutions for land acknowledgement and pride inclusive flag racing, item C10 and C11 respectively. We acknowledge that the area in which we gather is within the traditional territory of the present day Lenape people and that our school buildings lie on the territories of indigenous people who once inhabited and cultivated the area. Furthermore, we recognize that by honoring those who inhabited the land before us, we help to build an understanding around the history of our land and its indigenous people, as, we all, as well as set the tone for honoring all people who have been historically marginalized or underserved. Therefore, on November 4th, we will, be, we will perform a land acknowledgement at the Board of Education Office. 
More details on that event will be forthcoming in the days to come. As you may be aware, October is LGBTQ plus History Month and Pride Month is recognized in June. Because we are committed to creating safe and supportive affirming school environments all year long, not only during a particular month, we'll be raising a pride inclusive flag at the, board of, uh, at the board office this October to be flown in conjunction with the American flag all year long. Celebrating LGBTQ plus history month and pride month influences awareness and provides support and advocacy for the Hackensack Public Schools LGBTQ plus community it is our hope that the Pride Inclusive flag will demonstrate to our LGBTQ plus community that not only are they welcome in our schools, but also that they belong. Finally, on behalf of the Board of Education, I would like to take a brief moment to thank all of you that are in attendance tonight for your participation at your board meetings, and we welcome your comments. Now on to the enrollment report. There are currently 5,106 students enrolled in Hackensack Public Schools, and 10 HIV investigations have been completed this past month. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. We'll move on to our public comments portion. Um, so when you come up, if you will please identify um, your name, uh, if uh, your municipality, and uh, if you are affiliated with any group or individual that we need to know about, please. And um, please address your comments to me. And um, if there is a response needed, I will either ask someone to respond to that at the end, or I will do it myself. So uh, whoever is first up. Good evening, everyone. My name is Todd Rackman, and I've been a resident of Hackensack for over 44 years. I am a write-in candidate running for one of the seats on the Board of Education in the upcoming election on Tuesday, November 8th. I was employed in Hackensack Public Schools for 38 years as a special education teacher and then as a learning disabilities teacher consultant on a child study team. I was always an advocate for students, teachers, and parents, and worked closely with school administrators for placing students who were found eligible for special education and or related services in an appropriate program, whether it was in district or out of district. I have dedicated my career to education and families in Hackensack. I spent my entire 38 year career working in leadership roles with children and their families with special education needs. My extensive experience working in education has given me a deeper understanding of what children, families, systems, and communities need to be healthy and successful. I also understand systems and organizational culture, and I understand families and how children learn. I know the power of listening to students, the community, parents, teachers, and administrators, and how beneficial it can be for everyone when all parties have a seat at the table. I was also an active participant on many school committees, such as the bullying, harassment, suspension, and attendance committees. With my varied experiences and involvement in the community, I would consider myself an asset to be on the Board of Education. Hackensack is a good school district, and I would like to be an integral part of making it even better. Thank you for your anticipated support, and remember that I am a write-in candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eklund. Remember me? Good evening, Victor, that is Hackensack. First of all, I'd like to say that uh, Scott James Victory, you have my 100% support 
and what you're trying to do in this district. So anytime you want to reach out to me that you feel I can help you, I will. So thank you for your service. Now, let's get down to some other things. To, I, it appears that there's others on the board who feel that they are not able to work with you. That's what I feel. So if that's the case, if you don't feel like you can work with the board president and the board, other board members, maybe you should resign. Right now, right here. Because I'm not accepting that, that this disagreement in an open forum. Now, get to another matter. Um, Mr. Radcliffe made a statement about his history in the school, but what is not going to happen on my watch, and I'm watching closely, that the Board of Education is not going to be a stepping stone for anyone who feel as a uh, stepping stone into political office in Hackensack. That ain't no happen here, not on my watch. So I'm be watching and listening. And, need, and if it, the necessity comes up, I will personally approach it, whoever that may be, who's using this as a stepping stone for some political reason. Thank you. Evening, Carolyn Davis. I don't have a question. Believe it or not, I don't have a question. I just have a statement. Um, I want to thank Mrs. Parchman for that report. I think it's important for people to understand that when the state compares the schools, they don't compare the demographics of the schools. They throw everybody together. So we have a very diverse community here. We have ESL. We have um, special education. So uh, I think our school is doing very well. Is there move improvement? Yes. But when the state compares, they just it's not by size, it's not by demographics. So I just wanted to make that clear in case people don't know that. Thank you, Reverend Davis. Hi, Donna West. Um, I don't want to stand up here tonight, please, as the HEA president. I want to stand up. Oh, Lord, I can't even get this off. Take that camera off me for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd like to stand up here as a Hackensack resident and taxpayer. Um, and Mr. Geddes, I wasn't going to say anything. And Lord have mercy, you said exactly what I needed to say. I thought about this since last month. Um, Last week, last month's meeting was embarrassing, to say the least. Um, many of you know I am the president of the Hackensack Education Association, which is not why I'm standing up here, and have had differences with the persons or person who was before me. And none of my members ever knew that, because I chose not to ever air our dirty laundry. And so this community does not need to know that there is backbiting or fighting or anything. I was getting calls and texts up until the next day. What was that all about? And I had no, I, I, I couldn't answer, but I was embarrassed because if you have differences of opinion and you're there for the children, then that does not need to be made public if it is not here to benefit the children. Put your personal differences aside because sometimes we have to put on our big girl panties and our big boy underwear and sit there and work as a team. At least look like a team to the rest of us. We don't have to know what's going on. I don't want to know what's going on. I need to know that you are working together to do what Hackensack students need you to do. And that usually leads the yelling to Kasim, but tonight I'm doing it because it was embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. Yelling, we're not allowed to comment after, right? So why was somebody being told, say the name, say the name, say, you can't do that. We have protocol, right? You have protocol as well. 
But that was embarrassing. That is not Hackensack. And that is not the Hackensack Board of Education that I want to see sitting on that stage, fighting and working with the Hackensack Education Association, the Secretary's Association, the Custodians Association, and the community at large. Don't do that to our kids, ever. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bridget, Hackensack resident. That incident that took place was me that was being yelled at, to say the name, say the name. So let me direct this to you. No one gets me to do anything when it comes to trying to expose people. I would never expose anybody because that person who it was about knows that I'm talking to them. So what you did was wrong. And you trying to tell me, you better ask somebody who I am. Don't never, as long as you sit on that board, ever tell me to say the name, say the name. Because I will come directly to you the next time. So I'm just trying to tell you that is not right for our children. It was embarrassing. So I am the person that they, that was being spoke to, say the name, me. Don't do that again. If you needed to say something to me, then you need to try to reach out to me. And you need to go through your superintendent when you reach out to me. Don't ever do that to our children. Don't ever do that to our community. Conduct yourself in an adult manner because that almost acted like you was a kindergarten child doing that. If you don't like somebody, that's fine. I don't like a lot of people and they don't like me, but I'm good. So I'm just trying to tell you, don't do that. It was embarrassing and people were calling me. Was that you? Yes, it was me. It was directed to me. I would never expose anybody. That's not because the person I was talking about, they knew who, who they were. That's just how it goes here. So, and as far as Mr. Raglan, thank you for your bio, but I think your bio should have been done at your, aren't you having something on Thursday? I think that's where you're supposed to present that at. Um, not here at the Board of Education. Thank you. Good evening, board members and audience present here today. My name is Martha Martinez, uh, ESL bilingual teacher at the middle school. I am here today advocating for my ESL and bilingual students and also to voice my concerns at this board regarding the administrative decisions made by, made by the ESL bilingual and world languages director, Ms. Mariel Messina. Her decisions have created educational discrepancies for a group of students, they are already at a disadvantage. Let me point out that I am a bilingual language arts teacher as well. Our bilingual language arts curriculum is the same as the bilingual language arts for Gen Ed. The difference is our textbooks are in Spanish. So our students are already exposed to grade level material. The following, I wanna emphasize my, my brief, um, voice my, my concerns about the following situation. I'm just gonna highlight it, affecting the middle school ESL students. In 2020, Ms. Messina changed the curriculum. The students currently at the middle school are placed into ESL courses by grade level and not by language, English language proficiency, as we saw in the data. For example, a course by the name ESL 6 currently has 29 sixth graders sitting in one room, although some are beginning to learn English and others have been in, in our district since kindergarten. The New Jersey state mandates that students be placed and scheduled based on the English language profici proficiency, which is provided by the access test in which we saw the data minutes ago. The language arts curriculum at the middle school, students grade fifth through eight is the exact curriculum for the ESL students. If you ask yourself, 
Why would that be a problem? Well, think about it. I have the answer for you. For example, if you are an ES, uh, ESL eighth grader that just arrived to this country, sitting in a language art class with material designed for gen ed students, how inequitable is that? How am I gonna provide the needs of students that don't have the linguistic and phonetic awareness? How am I gonna provide the resources for those students to go to high school and be able to succeed? To finalize, I asked the board to look into the bilingual ESL program at the middle school. As this curriculum changes, the elimination of resources and program designed to close the gap of five bilingual students has just done the opposite at a great magnitude on an educational basis. Thank you so much. Good evening, my name is Margarita Montserrat. I'm a 32 year veteran ESL bilingual teacher of which 25 years have been in Hackensack. I'm currently teaching Spanish and ESL at Hackensack Middle School. I'm here tonight to express my concerns about the decisions that Director of World Languages Bilingual ESL has made and the adverse impact these decisions have had on our HMS students, my colleagues and me. In summer of 2020, when the ESL curriculum underwent major changes, my teaching assignment changed. And as a result, I was teaching seventh and eighth grade ESL and bilingual language arts to the same grades and same students. As I reviewed the curriculum in preparation for my assignment, I noted that the ESL curriculum implemented the same novels as the bilingual language arts. Using this approach is not based on best practices. The novels used in an ESL class must be based on their English language proficiency levels and not on the native language levels. Despite multiple meetings and voicing my concerns with the director about the curriculum, no changes were made. The ESL curriculum for language learners that does not directly address the language proficiency levels and content like greetings, months of the year, describing yourself, verbs in the past and present tense, is not an ESL curriculum if we don't include that. As a result, our curriculum does not serve the real educational needs that our students need for closing the achievement gap and attaining academic success. Consequently, December 2021, I received a terrible evaluation score that was ineffective by the director, Ms. Messina. And in 32 years, I have never received an ineffective score as an educator. I can't help but draw a correlation between my objections to this curriculum and the ineffective score. Upon receiving this, I formally requested that Ms. Messina model how to teach using the current ESL curriculum. And as of this day, that request has not been granted. Further Furthermore, my colleagues in the ESL bilingual department hopelessly stood and witnessed how these directives adversely affected our ESL students' language development, as well as demoralized and dismantled our bilingual ESL department, resulting in three resignations of experienced bilingual certified teachers by the end of the 21-22 school year. Now I have been reassigned for this coming school year to world languages. That is not something that I requested. Currently, I have nine classes. My colleagues are teaching 10. And the level of stress and inequity we face daily because of our large workload has been previously addressed. In fact, Spanish teachers have gone from teaching 12 classes to 10. But still, this is unacceptable and inequitable while my colleagues teach five classes a day from the other departments. We need help. So I'm coming here to voice my concern and to let you know that we need to do what's best for our students. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Joanna Espinal. I am a resident educator and community advocate for Hackensack. I am here tonight to bring to your attention the inequities occurring with the ESL bilingual program under the approval of Ms. Messina, the director of bilingual ESL and world languages. To understand what is happening, you need to understand the high school ESL program. When a student arrives from another country at the high school level, their home language survey states another 
language other than English is spoken at home and the student receives a placement test and based on the results is scheduled for ESL and or bilingual courses. ESL students that enter the country at the high school level urgently need to be prepared to succeed in a college setting and workforce. For years, the high school had the following courses based on student language abilities. They had a port of entry, they had ESL level one, ESL level two, ESL level three, ESL level four. State mandates led to creating ESL level five almost three years ago, but levels one, two, and three were always double periods, meaning 80 minutes of valuable instructional time. Under Ms. Messina, the director of the department, she decided that this school year, ESL three students would only receive 40 minutes and it does not fulfill their language arts requirement. As the current ESL and social studies teacher for English language learners, we often talk about inspirational quotes and one of my personal favorites is, students are born with wings, teachers help them to fly. I am asking that this board sitting here today take a close look at the ed educational discrepancies being made which are clipping the wings of my ESL and bilingual students. We should be here to ensure that they all soar and that the comet that lies within them also does, whether they're bilingual, ESL, general education, or special education. Thank you in advance for taking the time to review all the ESL bilingual program matters throughout the district. As I assure you, kindergarten students, just like my high school students, are not receiving the services that are required by the state and federal government. Good evening, my name is Tara. I'm a resident of Hackensack for 30 years and a mother of a current high school student. I'm gonna be brief because some of these women back here already touched on what I wanted to talk about. Um, as far as some of these board members go, it, it's so unprofessional, the temper tantrums, the lies, just because people don't agree with you. You don't have children in the school district currently, so why should we believe that your best interest is these children and not politics? Um, it's about the kids, not politics. Again, I know some of you or a particular one of you has some lawsuits currently going against you for bullying or antagonizing certain people of Hackensack. Um, as far as everything, I mean, most of these women already talked about what I wanted to say, but uh, it's very unprofessional and embarrassing the way some of you do act. Good evening, my name is Winnie Burke, proud Comet, Hackensack resident. I have three things that I want to address this evening. First thing I wanted to talk about was the subs. Um, at some point last year, we came up with this idea that we wanted to bring people to Hackensack to sub and we increased the sub pay to like 250. Now it's dropped to 175. I don't know if that was a pandemic incentive or what that was, but it certainly made me wonder how I would feel if I worked in central office, took a job and they came in and said, oh, by the way, we're dropping your salary. I don't know. That would make me feel a little bit funny when I have bills to pay. Um, for subs trying to come through ESS, it's down to 140 now. And I heard the, all of the stories about, it's you know comparable to what other schools are paying and that's wonderful. Um, but when we have needs, we have needs. And so we can look at comparable what other people are paying or look at the fact that we have voids. And so sub might be okay, but when it comes time for us to have PDs, for whatever reason, there's no subs around. I don't know if salary has something to do with it, but certainly something for us to think about. My second thing is paras. Paras are probably one of our most useful 
resources. And we are still paying Paris part-time. I don't really understand why when we use them to do everything that we need them to do. I don't understand how we as a district have resources for technology, to buy books, for classroom libraries, to bring in consultants that make $150,000 on their contract, that our um, new programs we're bringing in, young audience and hey tutor, and don't get me wrong, I think those programs are wonderful, but I think it would be even more wonderful if we considered the fact that we're building our community by making some of those parents full-time parents that have benefits. You're not going to accept the job without having benefits. Why do we keep it, expecting them to keep staying? But they love hack and tech, but we need to consider what we would do to make them more comfortable. It makes it look like we're more comfortable with checking off things on the state's checklist of things we should do as a school, more so than we are about paying benefits to them. My last thing is about Spanish teachers in elementary school. We have four elementary schools, two Spanish teachers, an online curriculum, no physical resources that we are giving kids. They have to make it up themselves. And we think that if we have Spanish every three days, they're going to remember what they learned. Nope, if they had one Spanish teacher in every building that they met with on a regular basis once a week, maybe they would remember what they learned. But the cycle that we have going on is making it very difficult for those two Spanish teachers. It is unfair. You only do your job. Why expect somebody else to do two people's jobs and you only paying them one salary? Have a good evening. Hi, everybody. Um, Lisette Cordero out in resident of Hackensack now going on 29 years. Um, two students, products of Hackensack. My son graduated class of 2018. My daughter is currently a freshman at Hackensack High School. Um, I actually wasn't even going to bring this up. I was more so just really interested on hearing more about everything that was currently going on. But you did have a student earlier um, who was discussing the college fair, the upcoming college fair, uh, I believe October 26th, October 27th. Um, I found out about this college fair on October 7th. I received the list um, to, to peruse, to get an idea of who my daughter might like to go see. Um, the incentive there was, let's get our student out there as early as possible. Let the freshmen come, the sophomores come. Um, get my earrings. Um, so I was super excited. Unfortunately, out of well over 150 different schools that you are going to be presenting, you do not have one HBCU in attendance. Not one. And I think, me personally, that's devastating. Considering how very diverse Hackensack is, I did call and speak directly with Terry I don't want to butcher her last name. I have it, um, you know, and, and I did question, what could I do as a parent, as a member of the community, as a parent of a student who is a freshman looking forward to attending college? And if I'm lucky enough, she'll get into Delaware, who is an HBCU with an amazing veterinary program. But I won't be able to introduce her to that in this freshman year. I understand also from talking to her that you do have an HBU specific trip that is done later on when they're a junior, when they're a senior. I love it, but I think that we really need to focus on getting that representation in the high school for the venue that you get your ninth grader at, you get your sophomore at. There are a lot of students out there who don't understand what an HBCU is. And in the community that we serve here in Hackensack, I want to see that represented. I want them to have that opportunity. My daughter is half black and half Puerto Rican. The world is her oyster, but there is a rich and very particular history that she will only receive at that HBCU. I want her to know that that's an option. 
So I would greatly appreciate if you, as the Board of Ed, really took an opportunity into rectifying this for next year. I don't anticipate that in 20, you know, in the next coming couple of weeks that you'll have that opportunity. She did say, my time, she did say that they've been reached out to, it is by invite, and that the HBCUs have not responded. I do find that a little bit difficult to believe considering how many there are. And so that you're aware, she presented the fact to me that, well, we also need to include trade schools. At no point in time did I say don't. I said you don't have to include Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, so anyone else in the room? So now we will turn to um, Zoom. Hello, can you hear us? Hello, can I be heard? Yep, go ahead, you're on. Thank you, Kasim Gaines, Hackensack. Um, I'm going to try and keep my comments brief. First, I just wanted to begin by um, really asking the board to hear and consider um, the words of the world languages teachers that spoke on behalf of their students today. Um, very often, information doesn't actually make its way to the board, um, perhaps because it doesn't always get floated up. Um, it requires for uh, teachers and students and parents to come. Um, but for the ESL bilingual teachers that came out today with some very real concerns that um, I can attest have been brought up <laughs> um, in other formats, um, they, they do need the board's ear. So please, I hope that you, you take those comments to heart. Um, I, I wanted to touch on some things actually that happened to already be mentioned, um, but there was a lot mentioned at the end of the last meeting during the board comments about um, whether people were going to apologize or not apologize for behavior in closed session. Um, Trustee Powell did issue an apology um, for the behavior in close, although he uh, simultaneously apologized while also sort of saying that he was apologizing on behalf of, I guess, other people. Um, and uh, Trustee Vickery or President v v James Vickery um, said that it was not uh, him that caused any sort of disturbance in closed session that got members of the community upset. And um, we've heard a lot about the sort of say the name comments from uh, trustee um, Somerville, but you know, I, I think there is a responsibility 
when people are not behaving properly or with proper um, professionalism, that the names that should be said are perhaps people that aren't comporting themselves appropriately while in our schools, while um, sworn into a meeting. Um, those are actually the names that should be called out, people that aren't behaving properly in that way. Um, there was conversation, I believe, by, trust, by former trustee Coles that said, you know, everything that happens in the dark comes out to light. But if, if there are adults that are behaving worse than children in closed session, and for some reason, the other members of the board are protecting them and not um, saying who these members are, I think the public certainly has a right to know. I have sat in many board meetings where um, trustees, particularly uh, former trustee Francis Kajelja, yelled at members of the public, um, threatened members of the public, and board members, including some people that are still sitting up there right now, did nothing to admonish her. And so if we're asking for decorum of the public, I'm just asking that we're asking for decorum of the trustees as well. Thank you. Anyone else, Mr. Shapiro? Hello, you're on. Hi, I'm Tom Trezano, uh, representing the HEA as health and safety chair. Are you able to hear? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so uh, as a, a health and safety chair for the HEA, one of the things I've been kind of observing has to do with staffing. Um, we are understaffed at many positions and it ends up impacting the health and safety of the many people that end up occupying our spaces, uh, especially the children. Um, we need to have a commitment to find certificated staff to fill the positions that haven't been filled um, since some of the positions were vacated uh, in previous years. And additionally, we have um, somewhat uh, difficulty, um, some difficult situations where um, it seems the faculty are um, not hanging on to the positions that they've uh, signed up for, for various reasons. And I think it behooves the board um, administration in general to look into the reasons why we can have certificated staff in the room and then they would you know, opt to, to move elsewhere. Um, I know that there are many reasons why that could happen, but it's, uh, it's shocking when people who have been tenured in district for many years and, and generally happy um, decide to move on to places where they feel like they can be employed um, in, in much uh, happier conditions. Um, what that does though, I mean, in all reality is it ends up taking a series of substitute, uh, substitutes and people in coverage positions and puts them in charge of uh, students at, at length for um, you know, days, weeks, months. In a lot of cases, um, you know, the investment isn't there uh, in the people who are in the room taking care of the children. And it's nice that you can have um, you know, an adult in the room supervising young people, but you need more than that. You need to make sure that the kids are, are being tended to, their uh, education and learning is being tended to. We listened to a lot of reports about a lot of numbers earlier in the evening. It was all very eye-opening and informative, but you kind of have to imagine if you end up uh, taking those, that um, information and building it forward. Um, at a certain point, we're no longer blaming COVID interruptions for our kids' educations. Um, their health and safety isn't being considered when you don't have a certificated adult in the room, um, you know, operating class with the resources that they would need, um, you know, freeing up some opportunities for the kids to be able to be successful in their elementary years and their middle school years, and then additionally building on that in their high school years. So um, please be attentive to your hiring practices. Please be attentive to maintaining the faculty that you have in house um, and make sure that 
they have everything that they need in order to teach the kids, um, you know, and allow them to be both healthy and safety and uh, safe and successful. Uh, thank you. All right, that will end our public comments portion. Thank you all. Um, so let me, <clears throat> some things can be addressed in the board comments, but for those uh, questions slash uh, more pieces of our things that deal with directly um, the educational components I, I would like to address now. Uh, Ms. Burt, thank you as always for coming in and succinctly, you've got three things, subs, paras, um, and then the way that Spanish is being taught. Um, so the subs, that's kind of a recurring theme, so if, if as um, that's something that um, I would like for us to to at least have a conversation about as in, in our next committee meeting and wherever that needs to land, and, and then we can um, uh, revisit that uh, so that we can see the impact. So maybe um, we can come up with some data that's showing us how many subs we're lacking the numbers so that we can make a, a decision and see if, if there's an impact that we need to, to be dealing with um, because we don't want um, to have a recurring theme. Um, it seems to be a recurring theme. Um, the Spanish teachers, that's also, I have, that has been a recurring theme as well. Um, in, in, I'm not sure where that needs to land but if you could look into that for us and um, then maybe we can address that at our, our next meeting if, if, if there's not a way before then. But um, we want to make sure that um, the scheduling, is, I mean, it sounds like there's just whatever that one teacher is doing two schools. Uh, you know, um, so if we can figure that out and, and at least do a deep dive into seeing if that's the most effective. And um, paras, that um, is something that is an ongoing conversation. And um, that uh, we have a, a couple things moving forward uh, tonight. So, um, and it's for me because uh, I believe that paras are the backbone, one of our backbones, if we can have more than one, of what we do. Uh, many of you know I was an educator for 17 years in a severe, profound special education classroom, and I could not have functioned without them. They taught as many lessons, changed as many diapers, as many catheters, because we, we didn't have all the same resources and uh, we could not function without them. And so uh, I think it's vital that we not only show them the importance, but actually reflect that in what we do. Um, so, but tonight we do have um, um, a resolution
solution that is, is at least a step in the right direction. Um, Ms. Martinez, Ms. Espinal, and I think the name is, I have a hearing problem, so Ms. Monstra, I think is what I heard. Uh, first, thank you for uh, having the courage to come and, and speak in a board meeting because it's not always the most comfortable thing to do um, when it's dealing with a colleague and or someone that uh, is a supervisor. Um, so I thank you for coming and uh, the one thing that we will not settle for in any regard is clipping our kids' wings. That is not what we um, are about in this district. And so, uh, Mr. Sanchez, I, 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 as, as I was writing notes and I was looking back, so 2020 was a, obviously a pivotal year of when the curriculum changed. And, and, um, and, and so, if we can look into, figure out what's happening, there's obviously a problem. Um, we've had a, a, several comments via Zoom and, and in the room, something's going on. So if we can figure that out, if you'll, that's why we pay you. Um, if you could, and, and then report back to, to us and figure that out for us, um, we would appreciate that. And then we're gonna, we're gonna um, obviously take it seriously, but, but we're gonna help figure that out. And thank you, I really do mean that. Thank you for coming. Because um, I know it's not fun, um, especially since I have to go off to work tomorrow. Um, and then, um, Mr. Terzano, thank you for your comments and, and, and filling the positions. Uh, I know it's always, I know uh, our HR director is always hard at work and trying to fill those positions and, and get things moving. But I, I appreciate you relating that to health and safety from the union perspective and making sure that that is, is um, moving forward. So we um, will we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, so I think those are the big things that, that specifically deal with our educational pieces. The other things can be addressed in, in board comments. So we will move to our resolutions. Let me, oh, we, uh, what time is it? So we do need to make a motion. I'm sorry, I didn't realize how late it was. We do need to make a motion to uh, extend the meeting past 10 o'clock. It's already past 10 o'clock. That's in our bylaws. If I can have a motion to. Um, I'll make a motion to extend past 10. I know. It's 10, yeah. So can I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And we will move as, as quickly as we can. Um, if I can find wherever in the world we are. Okay. So we just. So, uh, we need to approve our minutes. Be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education approves the regular minutes and closed session minutes of, of, of September 19th, 2022 as submitted. Can I have a motion for those? Mr. Powell, thank you. Can I have a sec uh, Mr. Uh, Carroll seconded? Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any no's? And there are none. Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. I abstain. I wasn't here. I uh, abstain. Okay. Thank you, Miss Mari. Abstain. She was not here. Um, so we will move into personnel, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, before we move into personnel, I'd like to make a motion to table item I of okay. personnel. So before we move into personnel, we need to deal with a motion to table. So therefore, I need a second to second. table letter I. Second. So we have a second from Ms. Somerville. So we need to do a roll call to table letter I. Mr. Mendez is absent. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? No. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Mori? Yes. Mr. Oates? No. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? No. Ms. Marlene? Somerville? <laughs> yes. Mr. James Vickery? No. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five against four. The yeses have it. So that motion is tabled, and um, so now we will be voting on the personnel agenda. 
with everything except the letter I. So, so um, Mr. Mercury, I would like to bring forth personal agenda A through uh, DD minus the letter I, which we're taking. Perfect. And do we have a second? Mr. Powell, thank you. Mr. Bendezu is absent. Mr. Carroll? Yes, I agree with everything you said. So. No, C3. C3. Was the wrestling coach? I just abstain from that. Absolutely. Everything else I agree with. So, everything else. Yes, except Z3, you abstain from. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Mori? Yes. Mr. Oates? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Motion passes A1 to ADD except for I, which is fatal. Very good. Policy, Mr. Oates? Sure. Uh, policy this week, they met in the night. There are two new policies to be read for the first time. One that will be read for a second time, uh, which is the second read, which is the emer emergency virtual remote instruction program is mandated. Uh, quick note, policy 5512, which is for first read, is the harassment, intimidation, or bullying. There's just a couple of revisions in that policy. Can you hear me now? Oh, here we go. Now I can hear myself now, too. Oh, this is going to get fun. All right, cool. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So policy 5512, harassment, intimidation, bullying. A uh, couple revisions to that policy that reflect new administrative code that was put into place in 20, 2017 and also January of 2022. A couple of those include uh, new reporting forms, new intervention plans, determining consequences and remedial measures. Uh, the reporting forms are a big part of this. Those were, even though we're voting on it tonight, they were put into place uh, at the start of this year. Uh, and policy 0152 for board officers, we're looking to revamp the way we have board elections at the reorganization meeting. Uh, last year, this past year, there was a little bit of a kerfuffle and we moved on accordingly, but our board policy doesn't reflect how we moved on. So now we're gonna be adding a fourth uh, paragraph that reflects, uh, I guess the, uh, the road if, in case we can't come to a majority vote. So it'll spell out that we do have a majority vote. Actually, I can read it right here. Let me see if I can I'll pull this up real quick. This is, a, a, again, a new paragraph that we'll be adding into our new policy. It just says, quickly, if no nominee receives a majority vote of the members present after three roll call votes, the matter will begin anew in the next regular meeting. If no nominee receives a majority vote of the members present after three roll call votes, the board secretary may be instructed by the majority of the quorum to notify the executive county superintendent of the deadlock. That's pretty much what we did. It just wasn't spelled out in our policy. We did kick around a couple of different ways to come to this. Good. Okay, okay. So we, we did kick around a couple avenues to how to uh, change this and adopt it. One suggestion was uh, by plurality, that kind of doesn't give, doesn't leave the majority of the board to support the new leadership. So plurality kind of wasn't a good idea. There's also an option of uh, reading that if there's multiple people that are looking for the vote and the majority isn't reached, then the fewest, the, the member with the fewest votes would be dropped off for another one. That was another suggestion. I just want to know if anybody has any discussion or debate about that addition to that policy. Um, I think it was, uh, Mike, I think it was one word, maybe. I think may we, oh, may oh. when we had the initial discussion, it wasn't so, maybe. I think the word was will. The board secretary will forward to the county commissioner. So we may just want to clarify that with uh, the policy chair. 
Okay, so we we're going to okay. <clears throat> so, so before we have the discussion, we need to get a motion in a second. Oh, we have to can I make a motion for discussion? No, well, just a motion in, in a second, then I'll call oh. the discussion. So, can we have a motion to move forward? So, you made a motion. I made a motion to move forward, yes. So, can I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? So um, the whole thing about the maybe and may or, or will. Ms. Uh, Ms. Ms. Marks is here. If you don't mind, she can clarify. Is it okay that uh, President Victory? Is it okay to ask Ms. Marks just to clarify that one comment? Uh, sure. And everybody, y'all speaking to your microphones. They're having a hard time. She can't hear. So they're asking to clarify the the may versus will in the policy regarding sending it to the county superintendent thanks Ms. marks so the conversation i had was with phil mccastro of strauss esme and really it is the board's prerogative to determine what that language what wording the board chooses, it is your prerogative to make that decision in consultation as highly recommended by him with our board attorney. Okay, so we have to decide if it is maybe or will. Okay. That is correct. Thanks, Ms. Marks. So um, just to talk a little bit more about um, how we have it right now with that fourth paragraph, what I like about it is that it forces us as a board, a board of nine, to work together to come to a consensus as to who we want to be in leadership versus um, if it's a plurality vote, it can easily be altered where only three people get to decide or four people get to decide who's leading our board. Um, and, and we wanna make sure that we're not controlling just based off of plurality, but a quorum based out of us nine elected board members. All right, what's in the best interest? Um, as far as the word maybe and will, that's correct. So I, I would leave that to our legal, um, <laughs> as to what would be best for us. In terms of the language you're saying that they may or will, um, if it, you know, if one's more mandatory, uh, you know, it's like a shall. So if you're saying will, then you, your discretion is going to say that if you're at that position, then it's really not discretionary. It's automatically going to get called over as opposed to a discretionary, you know, uh, at the discretion of the board. So I would leave that again within your purview. If you want to make it mandatory to get the ECS involved, which, you know, is always a good idea too. Because uh, that might help break you know, a, a deadlock. So, so from my understanding, the fourth paragraph says that we have a, a second, a, the next meeting we can try again, yes. right? Yes. Right. And then right. we can ship it right. over so to that's the. That's the only part we want to clarify. Like after the second meeting, if there's no quorum, you know, we don't go to a third meeting or anything. Right. Like we just yes. send it over, and that's the final. Meeting, yeah. Right? No. Okay. So, thanks. Any yeah. further? Uh, sorry. Yeah, Mike, I'm good. As long as we just clarify the wording, no, yeah. no issues with that. And we have a second read, so we can be done then. Yeah, but. sure. Does anybody have any other discussion? It's. Uh, I just want to note one thing that I think, uh, as Marks had mentioned, that the Castro from the Strauss asked me had said was that in, in our previous uh, vote at the reorganization meeting, and you can clarify this, that we all should only get one vote, so we all can't say yes to everybody all the time. Uh, as per Robert's rules, you only get one vote when an election process. So if there's four people, if there's three people that are running and everybody votes yes, that's 30 votes. <laughs> I'm not a, and I wasn't a math major, but that doesn't, there's only, there's not that many of us up here. So you only get one vote. And that I think that will help to solve some of the issues that we had in January was that you get one vote to vote for who you think would be the best candidate for president or vice president. So I think that in itself would 
solve a lot of problems. And with this fourth paragraph, I think that's the way to roll. All right, so any, any further discussion before we do roll call? Awesome. All right, so Ms. Singh. So, Mr. Ben Desu is absent. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Mori? Yes. Mr. Oates? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. James Wickery? Yes. Motion passes. All right, moving on to curriculum, Ms. Mori. Um, <laughs> okay, so I bring forward C1 through C26. I would like to highlight C6, 7, and 8. Um, these are all teachers that are in grad school and they are doing research, project, research projects and they're just asking for permission to um, use uh, some of our students for their research. Uh, for C10, it is our land acknowledgement um, that will be taking place on November 4th at the Board of Ed office, as Mr. Sanchez had described. And um, yes, with the Lenape people. For C11, it is the approval for the pride flag raising, which will be in October. I, I believe the date is not determined yet, correct? Uh, we'll know about that soon. For C23, it is the approval to submit the statement of assurance and the HIV grades um, of last year, the report that Ms. Parchment um, had read to us. For C24, it is the Hackensack Middle School and High School stipend for the advisor for the Gay Straight and Alliance um, Club. And for C26, it is the graduation pathways data report for the high school, it's the approval for that. Um, that's it, I'd like to motion um, for approval for C1 through C26. Thank you, can I have a second? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Goodman, I saw his hand go up. Um, and can we do a roll call? Yeah, Mr. Vendez who is absent, Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Mori? Yes. Mr. Oates? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. Moving on to finance and budget. Mr. Goodman? Good evening, everyone, especially those remaining. Uh, our finance committee meeting is uh, just a, the standard first four items. Uh, that's D1 and D4, but I wanted to highlight uh, D5, uh, which is uh, related to the, uh, the committee for NJQSAC. So this is the committee of people that will be on uh, uh, responsible for QSAC. And then D6 is uh, that the Hackensack Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools and business school and school business administrator approves the uniform memorandum of agreement between the Hackensack Police Department and the Hackensack Board of Ed for the 2022 to 2023 school year to be submitted to the County Office of the Department of Education. This is something we have every year, but of course we, we do need to keep that memorandum of understanding uh, in, in place. And so I submit items D1 through D6. Very good, thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Mr. Rodriguez, thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Bendesu is absent. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Ms. Mori? Yes. Mr. Oates? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Buildings and grounds, Mr. Rodriguez? Thank you, Mr. Vickery. Uh, I would like to bring forth motions E1 through E7. Um, there's a lot going on in, in uh, district as far as uh, building uh, facility upgrades. Um, 
on this agenda, it's uh, mostly just some change orders for the elevators that are happening in Jackson and Fairmount. Um, and we're still working on some upgrades as far as heating and air conditioning. So I'll bring forth E1 and E7. Very good. It's through E7. I'm sorry, E1 through E7. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Oates, second. Uh, roll call. Mr. Bendez, who is absent. Mr. Caro. Yes. Mr. Coleman. Yes. Mr. Goodman. Yes. Ms. Mori. Yes. Mr. Oates. Yes. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Ms. Somerville. Yes. Mr. James Vickery. Yes. Motion passes. And our newly um, put on the agenda officially, Community Relations Committee reports. Excellent. First time with the Community Relations official report is excellent. Uh, real quick, we are, uh, we met a couple weeks ago. There's a couple of members that were here tonight. And uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put uh, our community members' information on a drop-down on the website so that you, their information is there. We designed this committee with the idea that every neighborhood and every school would be represented somehow so we can get that information out to parents who necessarily don't want to come to a board meeting or we can find a way to improve that communication gap. That's another avenue that we could reach out and hear voices that we wouldn't necessarily hear. So that's gonna be coming uh, soon on there. And also we were kicking around more ideas how to make this district better. Um, there's, no agenda, there's no resolutions to put forward with that, but I'm very proud of those, those members of the committee. Uh, we can do a lot of special things. There's a special place and there's, let me tell you something, that, that's a, it's, a, it's a special group of people and uh, learn a lot every time we meet and shout out to them. And uh, that's all I have to say, Mr. President. All right, uh, thank you. So uh, old business, is there any old business that anyone needs to attend to tonight? Moving on to new business, any new business that anyone needs to attend to tonight? All right, moving on to board comments, starting on the end, Ms. Mark. <laughs> okay. uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for staying out here with us. Um, I did want to comment. I wasn't here last month um, and just driving up here, I got to see the beautiful main entrance of the high school. It looks very clean, very professional, very nice. Never knew that was the entrance of the high school, um, but now you, now you know. Um, Hispanic Heritage Month, yes, let's go. That is one of my favorite, favorite moments, I would say, um, being here at the high school was the Multicultural Assembly. As a student, I always participated. I enjoyed the enthusiasm of my peers. Um, it really brings the community together when they're able to see you in your element and they, they enjoy it, they enjoy it. Um, thank you to the students who came out and spoke, which seems like hours and hours ago, but thank you so much for um, highlighting with the pictures the Latin American games, my favorite is dominoes. So I'm glad that the students were able to share and, and play with, um, with others in the community or here at least, uh, showing the movie in the Heights, amazing movie. Um, let's see, the, the chorus, the song was truly beautiful. Thank you so much for coming out and, and singing that, that beautiful song. Um, thank you to Ash for his student report. Uh, he was very excited, enthusiastic. He even told me he bought a, um, his own folder. I said, next time we'll make sure that we get you a folder. <laughs> um, thank you to Ms. Parchment for her report on the student performance data, the anti-bullying rights, the graduation pathways. It's a lot, but it's necessary. It's necessary for us to see the demographics, how the state puts all of us together in one pool. It doesn't matter if you're ESL, it doesn't matter if you're special ed all of that gets generated and that's the number that that they use to determine certain programs or um, money also for our district thank you to mr moran and to josh cohen for their presentation on i was very disappointed that i couldn't go because the date got changed the date changed it was the week before and then i watched that i'm sorry <laughs> but i really wanted to go i had my shovel ready i knew what i was going to do that day um but I'm glad it was a great turnout. I'm very, very happy. Um, 
Now on to not so happy news. Um, because I wasn't here last month, I did get a chance to watch the meeting um, online. And being a current board member, being a parent, being an educator, I was extremely disappointed. Um, disappointed in behaviors, disappointed in lack of not addressing our advocates. And when I talk about our advocates, I talk about the teachers that came out that night, the parents that spoke out, the just the staff that addressed certain issues that weren't addressed at that meeting. And the one that stuck out to me the most was especially because I'm a parent of a child with special needs, a teacher came and addressed how we didn't have a VCBA for a specific classroom. So the classroom had to be moved, pushed in with another group of students. These students have IEPs for a reason. Students need to be, we need to take care of them. We need to make sure that we are not violating their, their IEPs. This is their education, and it's all on individual basis. And by us ignoring it and not addressing it, we're, we're ignoring these advocates. We're in, ignoring the teachers, the parents that are coming out here, spending time, their nights, and it's not okay. It's unacceptable. So I want us as a board to do better to address just like how um, Mr. Vickery just did, you know, just addressing, acknowledging that yes, we hear you, we see you, we will talk about it next meeting, we will talk about it at whatever, whatever time. But that didn't happen at last month's meeting. I want to make sure that our meetings aren't derailed due to personal conflicts. This, we're up here for our students. We are up here for our community. It's also very hard to sit up here and listen to our community members be embarrassed, be disappointed. And they're the ones who come and speak for the tons of hundreds of residents. And I applaud them and I thank them every time that they come, even though it might not be the nicest thing, but we need to hear it. And I, and I hope as many people were here tonight, continue to come out, continue to voice your concerns. We're listening. They may not be addressed, but moving forward, I want us to keep that practice of addressing these needs at least the day of. If we're able to answer them, my, my ESL, World Language Group, I'm, I'm, I'm very hurt to hear that they're not happy with the program. ESL, when I was in school, was one of the biggest programs here in Hackensack, was one of the best programs. People would come, they would move to Hackensack just to be in the, the bilingual program. I've actually met, coincid coincidentally, a couple months ago, one of um, the guys, his mom used to work here, and they used to talk beautiful things about the program, and now everyone's like, oh, well, no, the, the ESL program, and now I see why. The teachers aren't happy. You know parents aren't happy. But some of the parents don't know. And this is why we're here. We're here to advocate for those students. And we need to remember that. Um, I think that's it. I hope, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, and um, good night. So I guess I will be the first person to own my own behavior, but I am going to kind of go through this, not direct a comment personally to anyone, because that's not the intent sitting up with me. So for those individuals that came here today to have the whole issue about a public comment about um, personal behaviors, there's a few things that was mentioned. At no point in time is anyone ever sitting on this board proclaimed to this community that we up here don't like each other or that anybody hates each other. So I am shocked that that was a comment that was brought back to us that if you don't like somebody, you shouldn't have to show it. We're all passionate about the things that matter to us. 
right? And everybody's passion may come across differently. My passion may come across much more uh, robust than others sitting here. But at no point in time is anybody on this board hateful towards anybody else. That is just not true and it is not a fact. So I, would, I personally would like to clear that up. Nobody here, we may have our disagreement, we all don't see eye to eye, but that's the intent of you being here, right? Is for everybody to advocate their position and try to do the best that they can for the people and the members of the district. We're not here to be arguing with anybody about personal politics because this is a non-political body. There is no politics on the school board. The second part of it is what Mr. Um, Kasim Gaines um, came forward and said that about behaviors, right? Everybody here owns their behavior, but nobody else's behavior is either better or worse than the next person that's sitting next to them. We all are accountable to you guys, no matter what. So if the people in the community thinks that an apology is owed to them, then an apology is owed to them. We're all grown up enough to be able to say that. And again, I own my own behavior. If I came across as harsh, if I came across as you know, too passionate, if I came across in any way that seemed disrespectful to anybody else, then my sincere apologies. That was never the intent and that was never the conversation. When we sat here in January, one of the tasks that we as a board had a discussion about and was very clear about was transparency right? That we were going to bring to you guys the things that we could discuss and to be very open about our comments, to be very open about our feelings, to be very open about the things that happen. With the exception of the stuff that goes on that's confidential that we cannot talk about, everything else was supposed to be on the table. So if you as a body come to us and you're asking us for help and concern, but we get half of what you're discussing, and it's, well, I know the rest of the information, somebody else knows the rest of the information. It's kind of hard sometimes to be able to facilitate transparency, right? That's not the nature of it, that you only get half of the information. So uh, again, in full light of this, transparency is what we're all up here to try to effectuate and to try to make sure that we present to you guys all points of the conversation so that in the end, you guys can make a decision. Now, uh, Trustee Mori had said that we need to address some of the issues that you guys bring to us. That's a very dicey subject matter, right? Because we cannot administer the district. If you guys bring something to us and it requires making changes to curriculum or it, make it makes changes to a contract or it requires making changes to a, a schedule or a class or an assignment, that goes through the superintendent. We need to work with the superintendent and his staff in order for us to be able to effectuate those change for you guys. As a board body, I cannot sit here and say, okay, you're having issues with the ESL. I 100% agree with you. And I am going to make sure that you have what you need. We don't have the power to do that. That's not our job. The board has three roles and those are the lanes that we stay in. And if anything else needs to be done, we need to work directly with the superintendent in order for us to be able to put forth something while the teachers with the ESL program are complaining that they do not like the direction that is going in. Mr. Sanchez, can you please bring back to us a plan of action as to how you are going to address this? That is the only role and the only function we as a governing body have. So it's not that you are being ignored. It's not that we are not listening to you. It's not that we are not here to do what is in your best interest. By no means, we feel it, we hear it. I had two foster kids that went through the Hackensack school system. I still have three foster kids that are in the Hackensack school system. And I hear what's going on, what's happening, all of the, you know, the nuances when they come home from school. But again, as a parent, there's one way that I can proceed, right? As a board member, it's thoroughly different. So, I mean, in closing for me, um, you know, thank you to everybody that came on tonight. Thank you for Ms. Parchment, Ms. Mark, for the team that did the Hispanic Heritage Month for Jackson Avenue School, and for all the people who came forward and brought, you know, brought your opinion to here. And in the end, again, I own my own behavior. If I was rude, if I was abrupt, if anybody thought they were affected by my comment and my behavior, I sincerely apologize for that because that was never my intent. Nothing that I do is ever personal.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, thank you for coming out. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. It's late. I know you have to go to work tomorrow, so thank you. Uh, student report, Ash, as always, you're on top of your game. Thank you. Spanish Heritage Month, I was glad that it was highlighted. I spoke about it the last time. It was awesome. Thanks for the presentation. Ms. Parchment, thanks again for your presentation. It's a lot of grounds you have to cover, a lot of work. And, but you know, it was long, you stuck to your task, but thank you, thank you for what you do. Mr. Moran, how are you? I didn't know you were big on tree planting, man. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get you over to my spot. <laughs> but I drove by, they look great. Thank you so much, you and Josh Cohen for all the tree planting. Looks awesome, beautification, thank you. And the thought you put into it. And uh, I'll be coming by to have lunch with you maybe one day, we could sit under the shade and enjoy the beauty of it. But thanks again. And for everyone, the city, and uh, for everyone that was involved, Mr. Sanchez, uh, Mr. Vicar, you were there too. And for all the people that went to the tree plant, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, for the Ms. Montserrat Espinal, Espinal and uh, Ms. Martinez, thank you for coming forward, bringing your concerns. But most of all, thank you for your courage for bringing it to our attention. But like Ms. Somerville quite rightly said, we don't administrate the district we can pass it on to Mr. Sanchez and his administrative team and emphasize how we feel about it. But in the end, Mr. Sanchez and his administrative team, I'm sure they will handle this. But the board does not handle that. But thank you for coming here and highlighting the issues and the problems if that's such. Thank you again. Uh, the ESL bilingual program, uh, I listened carefully to your presentation. I hope we're doing what we should be doing. If not, that's a concern. I can't speak to it because I don't know the program in depth, but I hope we're sticking to the guidelines, policies, and you know, adhering to the standards. It's important. We had a state and the Fed, federal government standard. Now, uh, it's going to burn. Uh, you mentioned three critical issues of subs. I'm not sure why we dropped our, how much we pay. I can't speak to that. We have Mr. Sanchez, we have HR, but I, I agree with what you said. If you, if other districts are paying more, they will attract, they will attract the subs. All right, so I do agree with you. I did mention that, so that's one of my concerns, and I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, the full-time powers with benefits, we spoke about at once. Uh, that's something that needs to be discussed. And like I said, if you want to attract quality people and have longevity and keep them here, you have to take care of it. So it's also those the second good point. And your third point, I made some notes, elementary schools. Do we really have only two Spanish teachers? Wow. I just say, wow. I mean, I commend them for what they do, but I am a teacher by trade. I taught for a long time before I started working in the medical field. And I'm sure they're stretched thin. And when you stretch thin, your productivity will drop because you can only do so much. I, once again, Mrs. Sanchez, if you could take a look into this and maybe we can hire more people for our students, which will raise our productivity standards. But thank you for bringing it to us. Um, I'm very surprised. But thanks again, your three points were excellent points. Uh, now, I left this for last. We as a board, uh, this is my fourth year on the board. Right now, I'm the longest serving member on this board right here. I don't dislike any of my board members. I want to clear that. We're passionate. The word is passionate. If all board members agree every single meeting, you can Google it, you're not a good boy. You can't agree. Even in a relationship, you're not gonna agree all the time. There's times when you can agree to disagree. And there's times like tonight, you see we vote yes, we vote no. 
That's what we're here for. But we're not, and there's times we all vote yes. Sometimes we all vote no, but we're passionate. And I can look at every single board member. I do not dislike any of you. I've been around with you guys for quite some time. I respect you. I appreciate you. I respect what you, all of us bring to the table. But being passionate is not disrespectful. And it's okay to be passionate. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Can we do better? Yes. Can I do better? Of course, we're not perfect. None of us are. And if we lift our voice sometimes, it's not being rude. It's just trying to make a point and bring it across. Can we tone it down? Sure we can. So all we gotta do is say to each other, tone it down. Let's have some more decorum. But you know, that's how I look at it, but it, it's okay to be passionate, okay? And uh, so that's pretty much all I have to say that uh, I, love this, I love this board and I'm happy to serve. It's not easy for me to serve the job that I have, but I wouldn't give it up for anything else. Why? I do it for the kids. My son went to the school system and I'm off the cuff now, I'm not looking at anything. And I saw things that could be better. And that's why I chose to get on the board. Many of you knew me before I even got on the board. I came a long way and I saw things and I'm just here to make it better. That's all I'm here to do. If I do something wrong, I can say, I'm sorry. My mom taught me that. And my dad and my family. I have good family values. I'm not afraid to say, I'm sorry. I'm not. Even if I'm, I'm not too grown to say I'm sorry. And I think, I hope many people can take this to heart. Even the last time I said I was sorry. I'm sorry for being passionate. I'm sorry for, for being strong in what I believe in. It's not disrespectful. And hold fast to your standards and your beliefs and your values and your morals. I'm not beholden to anyone. I'm beholden to the kids of Arkansas. And as long as I do or we do what's best for the kids, I think we're on the right track. And listen, I appeal to you all, if we're getting off track, just bring us back on track. Again, we're not perfect. Not all the decisions we make are popular. We're just here to try our best. And that's all I want to say. I love you guys. I love what we do. And I love Atkinson. I, was, I wasn't born in Atkinson. I'm transplanted into Atkinson. I was in Teaneck before I moved to Atkinson. And Teaneck is a great district. People told me don't go to Atkinson. I bought a house in Atkinson because I believe in it. And I want to tell all the educators tonight and all the support people from my heart and my family to all of you. Swedeker, Samoran, I can give some people a shout out that had direct interaction with my son. I'm very emotional when I speak to you about this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parchman. Thank you for helping my son to where he is today. He's at St. Peter's. Ex he's exceeding in academics. And the coach is track coach that has helped him to where he is today. He's excelling in sports. And I want to just tell you again, thank you for what you did for my son from the bottom of my heart. God bless you. Good night. Thank you, Mr. President. It's late. I have uh, no comments. Um, everything that Trustee Maury said, those were wonderful comments and encapsulated everything I could have possibly thought to say, and then some. Um, anything I would add to that would just be cumulative. I know that we tend to do our board comments and just kind of reiterate what everyone else said before. So with that, good night, everyone. <laughs> We're five hours in, guys. How do we feel, huh? Yeah? All-nighter? Let's do an all-nighter. Why not? Let's go for it. We're getting good at this. We keep going. <laughs> now, real quick, uh, awesome comments from my fellow trustees. Uh, Coach Saban, Nick Saban, Alabama, says passion can be mistaken, or aggression can be mistaken for passion by the... By the uh, by the, uh, I just forgot. I'm so punchy. I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Sleepy. I'm sleepy. That's it. I only had one cup of coffee at, at earlier when we started, and I need another cup. Fashion. It's all about fashion. What? Yeah, but for those without it, that's it. There you go. Uh, shout out to Mr. Pemberton and this and special services for the, the rise program with the food outside. That was phenomenal. Good job by you guys, Mr. and Mrs. Carroll. Oh, it just came to me for the unmotivated. Passion looks like aggression to the unmotivated. That's what I heard. Okay. Sorry. Let me get the point. I'm sorry. 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 Uh, Hispanic Heritage Month again, Ms. Maury. Everything she said, spot on. Um, student report, Ash is doing a great job. High school open house, please. Middle school parents, go to the open house in the high school. The high school has a lot to offer. Please be involved, get there, see what, see what they have to offer. There's a lot of stuff, great stuff going on there. You need to know, we have to do a better job of keeping our talent in the, in the city, in the district. And that also speaks to middle schoolers leaving, to parochials and everything. We have a lot going on in high school, please. Let's do a good job with the open house. Uh, Ms. Ose Parchman, the HIV report, thank you so much. Uh, shout out to Ms. Coleman for doing a lot of good things with the HIV. It's one of the reasons why I ran for the board in the first place, but I'm proud of the, prog the progress that we've made. Uh, phenomenal job there. Um, also, I'm sorry I didn't make it, Mr. Moran down Jackson. I, I pride myself in being a poor man's horticulturist. Uh, I like to, I used to work in a nursery. I like to get dirty. I'm sorry I wasn't able to make it. But uh, there's a lot of great stuff going on in the district. We have... 5,106 students, and we have to remember that the students cannot be a byproduct of all the political adult shenanigans and the hidden agendas. It's all about the students. We have to remind ourselves of that, and that's what it's all about. Go comments. Mr. Goodman. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, agree with Trustee Coleman because Trustee Maury said everything that I was going to say in terms of complimenting everyone that was up at the podium, uh, our students who made some beautiful food, and uh, Trustee Maury said it all. So have a good evening, everyone. Mr. Carroll? Yeah, it's, um, it's late. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, but the giant came at me. <laughs> Um, again, <laughs> everyone, everything's been said. Thank yous to um, all presentations. Um, Ash, the student report between, uh, between Ash and um, Mike here, they get me fired up a little bit. Um, this parchment, thank you again, always informative. And so much statistical information, um, the HIV, um, HIV report, the anti-bullying bill of rights, the assessment, 91%, I believe, is great, outstanding. Um, I do want to say, though, that um, as a district, I think we could do a little better, maybe take a closer look at the policies for consequences to bullying and harassment. Um, I don't think any student should have to go to school and feel unsafe or feel like uh, continued harassment will continue to occur with them. So I think we should just look a little bit closer to that. Um, again, excuse my voice. Uh, Ms. Burke, Ms. West, always a pleasure to hear from you guys. Um, you always give us information that, uh, like I believe Mr. Gaines said, that might not get to us, which is very informative. Um, all the ESL teachers um, and Ms. Burke, your comments. Also, these uh, concerns will be addressed uh, between the board and Mr. Sanchez. And um, the, the HBCU from Ms. Alton, um, that, is, uh, that was astonishing to me to believe that not one HBCU college is going to be at the college fair. I believe that is unacceptable. We have to do better with that. And um, again, thank you all for coming out. The work group, 
in the uh, community. Thank you for coming out and your comments. For always keeping us on our toes. And I appreciate you tonight. Well, I want to thank you guys for hanging around this late. Um, I want to concur with Trustee Goodman and uh, Trustee Coleman on pretty much all of uh, Trustee Maury's comments. Uh, we're really right on point. Um, as a board, we do have to be better uh, than what happened last week. And the word embarrassment is totally understandable by what the public is saying, I, I agree. Uh, we have to do better. Uh, I uh, I want to, you know, once again, I want to give a, a, a big kudos to the um, to Miss Martinez, Miss Montserrat, Miss Esperant, who came out and voiced uh, their concern. Um, it's it's tough to do in front of this crowd, so. I'm glad they did it because it, it brought the light that they needed to get to that subject and it's going to be addressed. Um, I want to uh, thank, uh, you know, Ms. West, Mr. Gaines, Mr. Geddes for always holding us accountable uh, because you should be, you should do that. Um, we must do better because this is not a political forum. This is all about our kids. And sometimes uh, adults can forget that. Um, so with that, uh, thank you for coming out and have a good night. Thank you for hanging in there. <clears throat> so um, I do want to, I'll be quick. I, I thank um, Mr. Pemberton and, and um, Ms. Carroll and all those that are uh, part of the RISE program. Uh, it's it's nice to have a little snack in between times. Um, all of the students who participated in the program before this, it, it's actually one of my favorite, um, uh, the joint program uh, or the board meeting is one of my favorite because we always get to see such amazing kids. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of times we have to do all the business end of it, but getting to see the kids perform and do their thing is uh, the best part of what we do. And uh, Hispanic Heritage Month has been exciting. I got to go to Fairmount uh, where my child got to, <laughs> bless his heart, learn how to salsa dance. We worked really hard trying to help him learn to move his hips. It still has not worked, but um, we're gonna do better for next year. Um, Ms. Parchment, not only do you do a great job but here, I also know that it takes hours upon hours to get that in a, uh, a format that we can digest it uh, in, in that amount of time. And well, and I know there's a team of people that, that, that work with you, but thank you for being diligent and, and bringing that to us. Um, Reverend Davis, always, um, one thing I, I love to do is, is I go through my, my notes is connecting things to kids. I, I, I go through my, okay, Hispanic Heritage Month, that connects to kids. Reverend Davis comment connects to kids. Uh, everything that you did connects to kids because that's one thing that we do have to focus on is making sure that everything that happens in this room keeps the kids at the center. And if we can all remember that, everybody in the room, everybody on this dais, then um, we're gonna be on, right on track. Um, the the uh, people that worked with um, the ESL, the bringing those concerns, it, it connected to children. And that is what is what's going to take this district forward. Is that we can all stay on the same page about connecting to kids and every comment that happens in this room is connecting it to children, we're gonna be fine. Um, Mr. Moran and Mr. Cohen, it was fantastic to see Mr. Moran in his element running around um, like he normally does. Uh, he can loop that building in 2.4 seconds like nobody in his business. Um, I'm excited about uh, the land acknowledgement that's coming up. Uh, I think it is important for us in, in, in this community, um, our uh, commitment to equity and, um, and the importance that we are working on our um, anti-racism work and the equity that we work on. There are two big things that are going to happen soon. One is November 4th, and that is our land acknowledgement, um, acknowledging that we live and work on the uh, 
original land of the Lenape people um, and that um, taking that time to acknowledge that and continually keeping that in front of us as we move forward in the, um, the school year, um, that is something that we will do. Um, we will have um, an acknowledgement ceremony each year in some way to acknowledge that um, is going to be important for us. And then um, having our flag raising and the beautiful part about that is, is not only are we raising a flag, and it's not for a month or a certain time of year, we are going to fly it under the, the American flag. And it is not saying that we tolerate a group of persons or people in this community. It is saying we celebrate you, you are welcome, and we, we want all people in our community. And so um, I applaud Mr. Sanchez for um, wanting to make sure that that happens uh, in our district because that is a, a bold and big statement and I'm proud to be a part of that. Um, now, a piece that I will own for um, last month's meeting is that um, now I will say er every month since I have um, been president, I have made it a point to make sure that our questions, that your questions are answered. And because of all that was happening in last month's meeting, I did fail to answer the questions appropriately. And that's on me. Uh, I apologize for that. I should have answered um, the questions, uh, but as everything was unfolding and happening at the end of the meeting, um, it, it, the way it just all happened at, at once, I did not do, um, I was not my best at the very end to be able to uh, answer those questions, and I should have, and I apologize. So um, moving forward, though, I will make sure that, um, like I have every other month, we've always answered the questions since January. I will make sure that that happens, um, no matter what is happening in the room at the time. Um, thank you for sticking with us. We are done. Um, if I can have a motion. I didn't even have to say the word, Mr. Powell. Aye. Second, and uh, all those aye. in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>